friends. Okay. Um, today's lesson is on page number 189 of your Oxford Progressive English. Um, a simple, very simple topic this one is. We are all familiar with prepositions. If you can see in your book, um, the lesson begins with a list of certain prepositions that we commonly use. Is it better now, Rafi? Is it better now? I'm a baby with me. I'm like, we'll could be watching our human under the key. Is it better now? A bit better. Is it progress? Oh, I just do hope so. Actually, I'm so tired from yesterday's traveling. We had to wait for hours upon hours at the airport. I'm that, that is one of the reasons why I changed the timings of uh, today's lesson as well. Um, I'm um, I can't. Well, let us story a little bit. Um, we've done 89 of your Oxford Progressive English. The lesson begins with a list of prepositions uh, which are commonly used. Um, they, um, and we know how prepositions work, isn't it? Um, basically, prepositions are used um, before, uh, oh, sorry, with the noun, um, such as in the box, on the table, into the... Right. Yeah. So it is often used before the noun uh, to, to create a prepositional phrase, okay? And then you can even add it to um, a pronoun, okay? Such as before her, um, underneath it, etc. Despite, um, despite them, Okay, now over here, um, I will be explaining how prepositional phrases work. A prepositional phrase is a group of words that consist of a preposition, its object, which will be a noun or a pronoun, and any words that modify, modify and describe the quality of the object. Okay, for example, Um, simply, a prepositional phrase is a group of words that consist of, number one, a preposition, number two, the object of the preposition, which will either be a noun or a pronoun, and any modifiers, anything that describes the quality. For example, the genie from the brass lamp granted three wishes. Now, from is the preposition, the brass is the modifier and lamp is the object of the preposition. Lamp is the noun. Altogether, from the brass lamp is a prepositional phrase which describes the genie. That is, what kind of a genie? the one that came from the brass lamp, okay? The one that lived in the brass lamp or the one that came from the um, gr brass lamp, okay? So all together, all four words together make up a prepositional phrase. We have already done that a phrase is a group, meaningful group of verb words. Now, 
let's have a look at some easy examples of prepositional phrase so that we can better understand the content. In these examples, the prepositional phrase is shaded and the preposition is in bold. A singer with passion, with passion. With is the preposition, passion is the noun. A town near London. This is the preposition and this is noun. Again, a town near London. Near is a preposition. London is the noun. Keep in time. Preposition. Time is noun. He acts without thinking. Without is a preposition. Thinking is the noun. Now, the thing is, we have understood that prepositional phrases um, are made up of a preposition and a noun or a pronoun and at times the quality that it describes, okay? It is a little bit more complicated than shown above because the noun can be anything that plays the, um, the noun can be anything that plays the role of a noun. For example, it's a present from her, wait. Although the, the these, Examples are pretty simple, but the ones that are going to come up next are going to be um, a little more tricky, but they will tell us how prepositional phrases can further be used. It's a present from her. Over here, from is a preposition, her is a pronoun. She stole it from the man across the street. Preposition. And the man is a noun phrase. Sorry. The man across the street is a noun phrase. Okay. Over here in, in the previous examples, In the previous examples, oh, sorry, over here, for example, you have a pronoun, oh, sorry, preposition, and then you had the noun. Over here, you had a preposition, and since a verb in I, you know, since you have a verb ending with ing, which is being used as a noun, it is called a gerund. Over here, you have a pronoun along with the preposition. Here, the man across the street. Which man? The one who is across the street. This is a noun phrase as mentioned below. And from is your preposition. In the last ex um, example, what he said is a noun clause and from is your preposition okay so at times we can use we can replace um, the noun with a pronoun with a noun phrase or with a noun clause Then, yes, then as your book teaches you, once you understand that um, prepositional phrases are made with a preposition added to a noun or a pronoun, we come to the function of prepositional phrase. That is, how do we use it? Um, the prepositional phrases can have multiple grammatical functions each one different from the other. Prepositional phrases can function as either adjectives, as an adjective, obviously, they will be describing the quality of a noun, 
or as an adverb where they will be describing the quality of a verb. For example, prepositional phrases functioning as adjectives that modify noun. Example, do you mean that boy in the corner? Yeah. This phrase is describing whom? The boy. In the corner tells you about the one boy who is sitting at a specific place. Okay. Which boy are we talking about? The one who is in the corner. Understood? I, the, I know the policeman. Now, which policeman do I know? The one with the radio, not the one who uh, doesn't have a radio, not the one who's sitting in the car, but I know the policeman who is with the radio. Okay, so again, policeman is the noun, boy is the noun, and the phrase, the prepositional phrase is describing the, the or it, it is giving you some extra information about the noun. So over here, in both these examples, the prepositional phrase is being used as an adjective. Understood? Now, the important thing to understand is prepositional phrases because it is a phrase, it will be made up of more than one word. And because it is made up of more than one word, it is usually made of prepositions and pronoun, prepositions and nouns. Now, how is the prepositional phrase going to be used? It will be first used as a, you can use it as an adjective as we have just done. In these two examples, the prepositional phrases are functioning as adjectives. They are modifying nouns, that boy and the policeman. As they are multiple word adjectives, these prepositional phrases are a type of adjective phrase. Prepositional phrases function as adverbs that modify verbs. Now, again, I live near the stadium. Near the stadium is your prepositional phrase. Live is the verb. Where do I live? Near the st uh, stadium. We know that adverbs tell us who, why, where, who is this? Please mute yourself. When and what? Okay. These are the five questions and sometimes how. Okay. Now we already know that an adverb gives us answer to these six things. Who, why, where, when, what, and how. Okay. Now over here, I want to know where do I live or I want to tell where I live. Now, whenever any of these six questions are being answered, it means that this thing is going to act as an adverb. Why? Because it is telling you something about the verb. It is describing the quality of the verb. She speaks with notable enthusiasm. How does she speak? What is the manner of her speaking? She speaks with notable enthusiasm. So all of this phrase with notable enthusiasm is describing the quality of this verb. So the prepositional phrase is acting as an adverb in this sentence. In these two examples, the prepositional phrases are functioning as adverbs as they are modifying the verb live and speaks. 
they are multi-word adverbs. These prepositional phrases are a type of adverbial phrase. When I share the link, you can take a quick test from here, please. Okay. Sometimes prepositional phrases can even act as adjectives. Here are some more prepositional phrases functions as adjectives. Please buy the scarf with dots. Which kind, what, what kind of scarf do I want? The one with dots, scarf is a noun and with dot is describing the quality of my scarf. So the prepositional phrase is acting as an, oh, not as an ad adverb, but as an adjective. The prepositional phrase describes the noun scarf. We could have written dotted scarf, which proves that with dots is functioning as an adjective. As an adjective, the man on the radio has a boring voice. Again, man is a noun on the radio is describing the quality of the man. It is telling me which man I am talking about. The man who is on the radio. Give me one of the brown ones. One is a noun and of the brown ones is an adjective. For example, I have gone to buy some uh, M&Ms and since the packet is brown in color or um, I am talking about the M&Ms, I want the brown one, not the yellow one. Get it? So please give me one of the brown ones. I don't want the yellow ones. Okay, so of the brown ones tells me that I want one of the packages amongst the brown M&Ms. Prepositional phrases as adverbs. Here are some more prepositional phrases functions as adverbs. Lee raised his small mackerel with utmost price, pride. What did, what was raised? With utmost pride. Kya cheez hui hai with utmost pride? The action of raising. So it is the verb which is being described by this phrase. Hence, it is acting as an adverb. Although it is a prepositional phrase, but it is acting as the adverb. The prepositional phrase modifies the verb raised. It is an adverb of manner that is tells us how he raised it. He, we could have written proudly raised, which proves that with utmost pride is functioning as an adverb. Before the war, Chris played football for Barnstone Worth, uh, for Barnstone Worth United. The prepositional phrase modifies the verb played. It is an adverb of time, which tells us when he played. Okay. Played, when was football played? When was it done? Before the war. So again, before the war is acting as an adverb. Dawn is tired from the hike. Why is Dawn tired? Because they have been to the hike. So from the hike is the adverb. Lee lives in that fridge. Oh my, Lee has nothing better to do. So again, where does Lee live? In the fridge. So because it is telling me something about the action, hence this is again, and adverb. Oopsie, what do I want to do? Okay, fine. Now, we will take some real life examples 
or from um, certain magazines and um, newspapers. In these real life examples, the prepositional phrases are functioning as adjectives. Now we're going to further explain, as explained in your book as well, um, we are going to explain further how prepositional phrases are used in everyday life. These examples have been taken from um, certain magazines or from, um, they are proven facts. In these real life examples, the prepositional phrases are functioning as adjectives. The best defense against the atom bomb is not, oh my, is not to be there when it goes off. This was taken from the British Army Journal from 1949. Now, over here, against the bomb, against the atom bomb is your prepositional phrase, and it is Describing what? Best defense. Now, best defense is a noun. And because this phrase is describing the noun, it is acting as an adjective. Sorry for the mess up. In 1938, Time magazine chose Adolf Hitler for man of the year. Of the year is the prepositional phrase and it is describing the man. Man is a noun. So of the year is acting as an adjective. Red sky at night, shepherd's delight. Blue sky at night, day. This is from a poem. Red sky at night, at night is giving you the quality of it. What time? The sky. Sky is the nine now and at night is the adjective. Okay. Although red is also an adjective but we are talking about the prepositional phrase. The prepositional phrase is acting as, um, it is modifying the noun. These prepositional phrases are functioning as adverbs. Remember, uh, so we will basically be identifying the verb from the statement. I used to work in a fire hydrant factory. You couldn't park near the place. Now over here, in a fire hydrant factory is your prepositional phrase. It is describing the verb work. And later on, near the place is your prepositional phrase, which is describing the quality of the verb park. Park as in to park your car, okay? So because both of these are describing the quality of the verb, hence they are both being used as an adverb. In a fire hydrant factory is a prepositional phrase which is acting as an adverb because it is describing the quality of work. Where do you work? In a fire hydrant work factory. And where couldn't you park? Near that place. Never ruin an apology with an excuse. What with an excuse is your prepositional phrase and what is it describing? Ruin, which is the verb. So it is acting as an adverb again. This is not a novel to be tossed aside lightly. It should be thrown with great force. Satirist Dorothy, Parker. This is her critical analysis of some book. So um, she, she is describing her dislike for that particular book, whichever she is um, criticizing. So over here, she says, uh, it should be thrown with great force. What should be done with great force? The action of throwing. So thrown is a verb and the prepositional phrase is acting as an adverb. Now, 
in the example below, the first prepositional phrase functions as an adjective, while the second functions as an adverb. Now we can do this, okay? We can have two different um, usage, usage of the prepositional phrases within the same um, sentence, which tends to show that prepositional phrases are very strong um, and they are very helpful in um, you know, describing your uh, statements when it comes to English. A mathematical formula, let me clear everything else. A mathematical formula for happiness, reality divided by expectations. There are two ways to be happy, improve your reality or lower your expectations. This is by author Jody Picoult. Over here, formula is a noun and for happiness is de describing the quality of the formula. So over here, it is acting as an adjective. But this in, in, in the second one, reality divided by expectation. Divided is the verb and so by expectations is describing the verb and hence by expectations is an adverb. Um, since the next heading itself says that it can get quite complicated, for example, um, a raisin dropped in a glass of fresh champagne will bounce up and down continuously from the bottom of the glass to the top or whatever. Here in a glass of fresh champagne is a prepositional phrase functioning as an adverb that includes a prepositional phrase of fresh champagne functioning as an adjective. Similarly, from the bottom of the glass to the top is functioning. Urva Batul, why are you here? Bitte, I am taking a lesson um, and you are distracting me. Um, we will talk about it some other time. Thank you very much, Urva. Um, similarly, from the bottom of the glass to the top is functioning as an adverb and also includes... How do I get rid of this thing? Eight minute hair, Jai And also includes a prepositional phrase of the glass functioning as an adjective. Now, um, for today, if you can look into your book page number 190, I hope that I have explained as much as was required. Okay. And um, most of the examples given in your book are um, based from your text. Um, in um, which, which we did day before yesterday about Red Dog and uh, Nancy Gray. Um, I am going to read from the book, page 190. Each of the following sentences contain a prepositional phrase. Identify the prepositional phrase and explain its function in the sentence, okay? Um, just like I have done throughout the lesson, I kept informing, I kept telling you whether the prepositional phrase is acting as a noun, as an ad, um, ad, adjective, or as an um, adverb. Take it. You have to identify um, that only. Um, there are six statements to, um, you know, sort out. And then choose five prepositions from the box on page 189 and make them into prepositional phrases. Write five sentences using one of your prepositional phrases in each one of them. Okay? That is on page 189, this big box that you have, all you have to do is pick any five from, these, from this list and um, convert them into prepositional phrase. Okay. And then, for example, against uh, humanity. So you can make a sentence. Um, Israel is um, attacking Palestinians and their um, attacks are against humanity. Um, what? Uh, 
Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Now, this sentence of uh, the last statement that you just um, wrote, even in this, for president is, um, I I'll share this chunk. I'll share this chunk only. <laughs> so this will be our last example for the day. If you can see in this example, it says, um, Ma'am Rabia for president. Um, for president is your prepositional phrase. Can you identify Amira if it is acting as an adjective or as a as an adverb? Hanji Amira. For president is describing the quality. Ranji. Amira is stuck. Rafi, give it a shot. I have to tell you. I have to tell you. I am adjective. It is as an adjective, TK Amira, and it is describing what Kisko modify kar rahe. Ma'am Rabia. Very good. And Miss Rabia is, Ma'am Rabia is obviously a noun, so um, <laughs> is acting as an adjective phrase. It is acting as an adjective Ma'am Rabia is a noun. Ma'am Rabia is a noun. Tiko, thank you so very much. Um, simple aaj ki exercise. Kal wali jo hai, wo hogi. Ab Monday ko inshallah hum karenge. Uh, compound or phrasal prepositions or uske baad hamara uh, sirf ek writing task karke next week mein hum inshallah unit 7 complete kar denge um, what I decided for now is that we will have unit 7 and 8 if we have online classes only then we will do unit 7 and 8 only for your first term exams um, along with at least one or two uh, wo ye ek to descriptive writings ho jayengi or saath mein um, narrative or um, ek or wo kar lenge hum dekh lenge ke creative writing mein humne aur kya karna hai theek hai chale thank you so homework hai ji bete homework hai ha ha homework on page 190 oh wait you bhi aasan hai dekho acha page 190 writing task question number 1 and 2 and then page 191, you have another writing task. Fill in the gaps in the following sentences, one to six. Okay? Easy, very easy. Okay? You have to identify the identification is obviously going to be done on the book. Um, then from the list, you have to choose any five Prepositions, unko prepositional phrase me convert karke, apne sentences banana se. And then finally, page 191 pe, um, all you have to do is um, fill in, wo apko, even on the answers bhi niche diye rahe hain, all you have to do is write your own sentences using the following word. Okay, fine, whatever. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so very much. Okay, fine. Thank you. Thank you. I've read your chat. Thank you so very much. Allah is my pleasure.